everyone. Welcome back to Cowabunga Corner. In this episode, we have a very special guest because he has never been interviewed for this role before. Nope. No. No. Thank you for joining us, Mark. Uh, Mark was Razar's costume actor in Turtles 2 The Secret of the Oofs. Yes. Now, before you got into this, you were, you've were you been mainly a stunt double, right? Uh, uh, no, stunts, it's not really a stunt acting? double, but stunts. stunts. Stunts and acting, yes. I was an action actor. Now, how did I you get on. into doing stunt work? Well, I moved from Indiana specifically to become a stuntman. So that was my whole goal. So I moved to California to become a stuntman. And the, the, re, the reason I got the interview for Ninja Turtles was my first movie. Uh, a guy named Tom DeWeer, who was a rigger on, uh, who was doing all the action sequences, rigging it behind the scenes for Ninja Turtles, was on that. Previously, he directed a film, and I was cast as the main bad guy in it. So when this came up, quite a few years later, Tommy thought about me, I went and got the interview and got the job. That works out for you. But I, I came out here to be a stuntman and realized that I needed, because of 6'5", 265 pounds, there's not a lot of actors my size I can double. So I started acting, became an action actor. That's really cool. Yeah, so if you see me, I'm usually gonna die somewhere. So what inspired this role in your life? Which role? To get into the stunt work. What was your inspiration? I, I just think it was since I was a kid, I've always wanted to do it, I admired them. You know, I didn't know much about them, I was from Indiana. So I didn't really have a clue. But I knew the only way to do it was to go to Hollywood. So I got a one-way ticket and went to Hollywood. Went to a small little stunt school. And I uh, started from there. And you had to meet people. I knew nobody in California. Wow. That, yeah. That's starting it rough. Yeah. And this is 26. Today is over 26 years later. Now, did you have, like, a funding or something to get your own place and stuff when you got out here? Or? No. 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 Early on in my career, there was times that I uh, was sleeping under trees. I lived in a van. You know, wow. it's all that typical stuff that you hear, and I did, you know, but it was just something that I wanted to do so bad that I just continued on. It was like having that carrot, you know, and just keep chomping at it. And you made the dream? Made the dream. Still living the dream. That's really, really cool. Yeah. Uh, with this, uh, did you know of Ninja Turtles before you became Never Razor? heard of the Ninja Turtles. Never heard of them? No, never saw the movie, never did any of that. Wow. Never saw the movies. That is a shock because most people, at least by this point, has heard of them because they started to appear everywhere after the first movie. Uh, with uh, the, the movies and stuff, when you found out you were getting the part, did you study into the other medias at all? Or did you just focus on uh, Turtles 2, your script and your character? Did I go back and watch Ninja Turtles? Like the first movie and the cartoons or the comics? I did, I did watch. No, I didn't look at the comic. I, I did watch the movie. But let me tell you, it came up so quick. From the time that I, we had our interview, we had a physical interview, we had a call back within five minutes afterwards. I got the job, I was walking out to my car, the producers ran out and said, you got the job, we want you. And I was leaving the next day to go to uh, uh, England to have my suit made. And that's when Jim Henson passed away. So four days later, I went there and had my suit made in England. So Jim Henson passed away like the day, of, the day before I got this job. But it, that, it was that quick, so it wasn't a lot of time to go, I'm going to research all this thing, and this is a new character, it was just, okay, you're throwing into it, boom, you're gone. And that's how fast Kurt and I left to go have our streets made. So we went to England three times. Did you guys travel together then? No, separately. Separately, okay. Uh, with this being the suits made, what was it like going to Henson's Creature Shop? It's the most magical thing in my entire life, I mean, because growing up as a kid, you watch TV and, and and Sunday afternoon, you'd see um, uh, Walt Disney, right? You'd see Tinkerbell. And you'd see that little flash Tinkerbell, and it's like, that's the most magical thing I ever wanted to do. I want to be, I want to work on Disney shows. It's magic, you know? That's what, that's what sucked me in. And uh, unfortunately, there's not that much magic there. But when I worked with Jim Henson's, this was after Jim had passed away, and we walked through that door, it was like somebody threw fairy dust on you. Because it was just this magic feeling. And you went in there and everybody had such camaraderie. And it wasn't like they were being slave driven to do things. But they would they would work hard, they get their stuff done, they go and they play foosball during work and they go back and work. But they all knew they had a job and they did it their time at a speedy fashion and they did it with love. And and you could feel that energy when they were there. And that's I think how Jim Henson built it all, but I felt that. Every time I went over there and I worked with them, 
And from the time I started Ninja Turtles with our training, we had three weeks of uh, a suit training, mask training, where we all we did was just wear a blank mask and had that mask come to life. You know, because he has no facial movements, so you got to learn how to do that with your body movements and actions. So they trained us doing that. And from there, I actually got a lot more work, not just from Ninja Turtles, but it was from the what I learned from Henson's, what they trained me with. I went on to do um, Babylon 5, many seasons of that, to anything with prosthetics. I was one of the bigger guys doing prosthetics, so I was very, very fortunate. But with prosthetics, it's the same thing. You're behind a mask, you got to bring it alive. You know bring that character alive. And then I did uh, Power Rangers, came right off of that too, because what I had, had done with Ninja Turtles. They, and I started working with people who saw the work that I was doing from the training I got from Ninja Turtles. And I worked quite a bit after that because of it. That's fantastic. Yeah, but it wasn't because, but, oh, he's Razar, we want him. It wasn't that. No, it's the skills you learn when you it do it. It was the skills I learned from Jim Henson's, their, that, that whole group. That I was able Which to is an amazingly talented group as is yes, to learn is. from. Now, when you were there, was there any Muppets that really stood out that you were excited to see? Or I didn't anything? see a Muppet. You didn't see any of the, the Muppets or props around? No, no, wow. because the Muppets are done in New York. The creature shops was done in England. Yeah. So they, they were making all the creature stuff over there. So, you know, Henson's are spread up in different areas. So the yeah. Sesame Street stuff is done in uh, New York, isn't in New it? York. Yeah. So. Yeah, so I didn't see that. Okay, because I, I did hear from some of the others they were able to go and see some stuff while they were there. So they might cool. have. I wasn't. Yeah. You know, yeah. I had prime Everyone's directive. Everyone's different. You know, I didn't remember. I don't remember seeing anything in the Henson shop when I was there. Yeah. Um, but I, what I did see was all the cool stuff from the Ninja Turtles as they were building. So all the, even my character, all written, uh, drawn out, and you see it all come to life. And I had spent time. Because I'm very much into mechanics, and uh, you know that's kind of what I'm doing now too behind the scenes. So I, I would go and spend time as they were doing the animatronics with the heads, spend time with them, watch how they were doing it, and talk to them and converse with them. I ended up at the time it was the largest head they had. It was like 28 pounds that overslung here. It was, maybe 40, it was heavy, but it had 28 servos. It was the biggest one they had built. Wow. And he did was, have a huge head, huge costumes overall. Both Tolkien and Rouser were the biggest costumes in the film. Yeah, and at the finish of that, I was seven foot four. Rouser was seven four. I had wow. three and a half inch lifts, so I was on my toes the whole time. And uh, the head was up, and the face came down in front, so I couldn't see. I had no visual. The only visual I had was about a three foot arc around my feet. So all the fights and everything I did, I did off of feet movements. And my uh, my puppeteer, who was phenomenal, could talk to me, and I, I can't couldn't talk to him. Yeah. But his voice command just helped me through everything. It got to where I could do things just by him talking and not know where anything was at, know where a camera was, just by the placement. And I'm like this. In order for the head to work, my head is down like this most of the time. So. This oh, that had to be hard seeing. on the neck to yeah, be I down had, uh, that much. We, we put some bungee cords from my back up to the head to help support it. So when I pick it up, there was a lot of weight. It was overslung so that whenever the turtles were so small, the head looked down like this just to look like his eyes were looking at the turtles. So <sighs> I was constantly in this position looking down. I couldn't look straight out. So with that visual that was extremely hard, what was it like on your first day having to go through all this filming? Uh, was it was exciting. You know, it was still it was just a pleasure to be there. You know, and it was all new, so it was, you know, you're kind of a little bit on the edge and you're trying to do the best you can and, and uh, just letting the elements work with you. You know, I, I didn't have as much of a problem in the suit as a lot of people did getting hot. I acclimated pretty fast to it and they, they went out and they made a special cold suit for me, which most, most cold suits have a one eighth inch tube that runs vertically all around. You plug it into a machine, cools you off, you unplug it, you go to work, right? But because eighth inch cools off so fast as soon as you unplug it, they made half inch reservoirs for me so it would hold the cool a little bit longer, right? So that much up to the but it got to the point where I didn't really want that because I was heating up and cooling down, heating up and cooling down. 
that I ended up doing most of the whole show. Right after the first week, took it off and just, once I got in, once I got hot, I was there. I didn't want to open it up, just wanted to be hot. And then it was easy to work. And then the, the hens is really good about giving you breaks. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'd hope so. They yeah. got a lot of experience working with people in the suits. Exactly. Um, how many costumes for Razar was there on the set? Did they have two heads for him <clears throat> like they did for the turtles? Or? Nope. No, we only had one animatronic head, and we had a stunt head, two stunt heads that were made. And uh, I only wore. I only wore that stun head one time, and that was just to make sure they had the bungees and stuff to fall backwards at the end of the movie, which I didn't do. My, uh, the other guy came in and did that final stunt, but I had everything else in the movie. And all the fights were done with my animatronic head. Even when I picked up um, Mish, or not Mish, but you know, the, the uh, Michelangelo and spun him around in circles and threw him, it took hours going through the production to okay me to use that $150,000 head because I had been so comfortable with that thing on to now to put the stun head on, my view would change because now I can't look down, I have to look out. And my viewpoint was I don't really want to see stuff spinning around. I wanted to keep the animatronic head on, get the, the motion with it and just do it. And we did it, they finally did it. So I used that animatronic head through the whole show. That's great. I never put it on, I never put on the light head for any scenes. Wow. The other gentleman did when he did the fall back. Yeah. With uh, the, the spin around, the Michelangelo you just mentioned, was that a dummy that you spun yes, around? Yes, it was. Yeah. Remember, I'm in, I'm in lifts, three and yeah. a half inch lifts. I got these long uh, toes, which are mechanical toes, you know, that would move. So I had to do everything up here and spinning around and not seeing, completely blind, just looking around the circles as I threw it. Wow. Yeah, it was fun. Oh, that, that movie looked like a blast to work on. Was there any bloopers or anything that happened during the film that you remember, which you still laugh about to this day, or anything like that? I don't love any bloopers, but there's um, there's some cool stuff that that happened in the movie that uh, was a, a pure fluke. Um, there's when we're at Razar and I are, I mean Toka and I are ripping up the town at the very beginning, once we were born. They're yeah. showing us stuff, and I was throwing, picking up cars and, and flipping them over. It's a great shot because I actually never touched the car, but it looks like I picked it up and took my shoulder and hit it and moved it. But it just happened. That's just how it worked out. So if you ever see it, it looks like I just hit it with my shoulder and flipped it. But, you know, little things like that. But no, there was no, I can't think of any bloopers. Any cut scenes that you know of? Nope. I think no? we were all in there. That's really cool. Yeah. I think they used just about everything we did my recollection. Did you make a lot of friends on the set that you're still in touch with? I did. Uh, you know, when I say friends, not that I stayed in touch with throughout the years, except for uh, two people, and that was Nick Palma, who I did most of my action with, because it was usually Nick and I doing the action, not as much Mish, um, because it was doing the action. Yeah. And um, Nick was doubling Michelangelo at the time. So Nick and I became close friends, and we stayed, and we still are close friends, and uh, Kurt Bryant, because we were both stunt guys, we continued on doing the stunts closely, and so we would see each other periodically throughout the years. Where Mish, I met a few times just from other projects that we worked together on. Leaf kind of fell out of touch with him. I saw him last time I seen him was on the set of uh, Dinosaurs when he was doing Robbie. I just went down to see everybody. So last time I saw him, I saw Ken Scott on. Ken Trom, I think it's Ken Scott now. It's Ken Scott now. Yeah. Yes, on a small project that Tom DeWeer was doing with him. Tommy and Tommy are, I would say, we're talking cast, but the actual stunt people from behind it, the uh, other performers I've been stayed friends with from then on. Brian Smurf, Tom DeWeer, Billy Mortz, we all stayed friends. But in the way of cast. Yeah. That's, you know, that's the only, that, and then um, Stephen Ho. Who I, uh, you know, fell out of touch with. I was telling you earlier this year we started working together. We did some commercials, and you know he's the Asian Conan. Yes. He was great. The guy, the guy has so much energy. Yes, you know, these does. were really super funny characters then, and they're the same today. That's why I was bummer. I, I haven't seen Mish. I mean, I haven't. Excuse me, more than Mish, but Leaf. I haven't seen Leaf. He was a funny guy. 
Mish was super funny, but that's why they were the turtles, because they brought that energy to it, you know? They really did. They really did. And Mark Queso, I haven't seen Mark in ages, you know? Wow. I'd like to see him. He's super talented. What he was doing was incredible after his accident. Yes, it was. You know, that, that was amazing. With getting to meet you guys, I've met a lot of you, and I've been hearing so many different stories, but some of the stuff I've been enjoying to hear is favorite sets. Was there a set on the movie that you enjoyed working on the most? Uh, I can't say, you know, the outside exterior stuff, when, when um, Kurt and I were able to go through that town and start ripping things up, that was fun. Um, but every set had its own energy to it, Yeah. you know, and, and it's kind of, you broke it up into that. And each one was equally the same for me, because I was able to perform. I was able, because Razar and Toki didn't have a lot in the movie, but when they no. did, it was fun and we had a good time doing it. So I would say all of them were exciting to me just because I was able to perform. And as much as I could perform, the happier I was. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was cool every time you guys came on the scene, we'd get excited to see what happened next. That you never knew right around the corner. Yeah. Um, was there any scenes that was hard to film uh, or were they all pretty easy with the puppeteer leading you through it? Yeah. Uh, I don't think any of them were extremely hard to film, looking at it back today. I'm sure at the time it was, but there was never any like controversy, no arguing. There was never no like, you know, it's your fault, my fault. Oh, I didn't think From that. day one with my puppeteer, Gordon, uh, he was phenomenal. And it was just became such a team from day one that it was, it was pleasant for him to talk to me. You know, it was great to hear him, but he could direct me in a way that, like I said, I couldn't see. So I was pretty much blind. Walking, doing everything I was, if I'm picking up something, if I'm throwing it, or throwing an engine. He was always telling me and directing me and where the camera was so I could run right into the camera and I would move right in front of it. But it was just off of sheer faith of what he was telling me and he was just right on every time. So, you know, it, it, it just took, if it was going to be difficult because I had somebody else helping me, it took it out. So yeah. that was good. It's great that they're able to talk with you guys and communicate. Because not everyone can understand you outside of the, the suits, but being able to at least hear them and know what you're doing helps. Right, and he could um, he could see off my actions what I was doing inside, and it was kind of like the same back and forth. So he got so good watching me that he knew what I was doing, that he could pre-program it beforehand. Even the facial movements that he already had done for the character, but off of my body movements, he knew what I was feeling like inside which is great and it's kind of what I have done throughout these years now. I work behind the scenes, do a lot of wire work and it's my job is I watch people now. So when I have them up on the line, I got to see their movements, their feelings, so I don't drop somebody, yeah. something of that sort. Kurt and I do a lot of that. So, you know, that's now our job. It's kind of what he was doing, but I'm watching people now. <laughs> now, did you guys ever have fun with the costumes off the camera, like uh, Mark talked about how he tapped out the Leo costume doing tricks and stuff and goofing off even though the producers were not happy with that. Uh, right. Did you guys do anything? No, because once we were in there, and they were big and heavy, they were a lot heavier than what the Ninja Turtles were. Although, for what Mark could do with a shell on his back, <laughs> incredible, I'm still amazed by that today. He's doing backflips with this heavy weight on his back, which is amazing. But uh, no, and then once we were there, it took took so many people to put our costumes together yeah. that we didn't really have a lot of time to screw off and, and we uh, pretty much go back, sit in our chairs and just wait our time and go right back in and work. If anything, it was just telling jokes, sitting around, talking to each other, but physically, you know, we didn't really have too much time to do that stuff. Toka had an actual chair built for him. Did yeah. you? I did. Toka had to have a special one because of his uh, shell. Yeah, with so the spikes. So he couldn't just lean back. So he had one that he could sit on that kind of went through his legs. And mine was just a big chair. It was just like a big throne because I didn't have anything on my back. Yeah, it's a little bit easier when you don't. Yeah. Now, with the, the costumes, did you guys get to keep anything from the set, like scripts or any of your costume parts or anything? Oh, the only, yeah. The only thing I got is I got two lower sections of my legs because my legs it wasn't like a big suit he got into. Yeah. It was all sections and then sections and put them all together. So I, I had the feet that came down to the bottom, but no shoes and no toes. But it was the the outside skin. 
that would fit into it. I had them for many years, but the latex doesn't last very long on their own. Yeah. And so they deteriorate. It, it takes keeping them out of air and using stuff like armor wall to take care of a yeah. foam latex to try and make it last, but that, that that's never going to last forever. It melts. Yeah, yeah it, it, it melts starts away. to crumble into dust sometimes. So. Yeah, and that, that was a sad thing about it. You yeah. Know, I think we all thought it might last a little bit longer, not knowing at, at that time. Because I know that the Hensons were some of the first, were the first ones that do latex suits like that. They did some fantastic work going all the way back with uh, Labyrinth and Dark Crystal and oh, Star yeah. Wars. Incredible stuff. They, they, they really amazed everyone with the stuff that they popped out all these years, and they're still doing it. So I, I look forward to seeing stuff and hope the next movie has a Henson touch to it. <laughs> yeah, I've always wanted to go back and work the Hensons. That's why I kept going down to the dinosaurs. But um, the guy my size is not really that common. It just so happened that Raza and Toka needed to be big characters. Otherwise, they use this, the smaller characters to do the stuff. Yeah, they do use a lot of short people for all yeah. their stuff. So, But uh, after Ninja Turtles, did you you went on to keep doing stunts. What are some yeah. of the movies that you've worked on in the last 20 years? Oh, in the last 20 years. Yeah. Well, because of uh, Ninja Turtles, I went on and did quite a few seasons of Babylon 5, playing my own parts. Different characters, you can always tell them around. So the big guy usually shows up, it's me. It's different faces. And then I, I worked on Buffy and Angel, Enterprise, all wearing prosthetics. And from that, the good group of guys at Optic Nerve who were supplying and doing the prosthetics for these shows got a project called Power Rangers. And from there, they asked them, and they, it was a, for them, it was a no brainer, and it was great for me because they just said, Mark's the guy going to do, let's play Lord Zed. So from right there, I went in, we did our cast, and I, and because of what the Hansons had done with the latex suits, I talked to John Volich, who was uh, in charge of Optic Nerve. So let's give this a try. And they did the verse, their very first latex suit for the Power Rangers for me. Wow. On that. And it was phenomenal. It was a great suit. It was supposed to last four days, went for three and a half weeks. So they did a great job with it. And we ended up later on in another Buffy episode. <laughs> they put that suit together and I played the devil on oh. Buffy wearing my uh, Power Rangers suit. So <laughs> I've been fortunate to do that. and I. I continued working as a, an action actor from uh, Last Action Hero. Uh, I did some uh, CSIs. I've done a lot of stuff that's really hard to remember. I've been very fortunate to be working. I read that you worked on like the Spider-Man movie. I did. I did. I'm in the very first Spider-Man movie. I don't know if you remember the scene where he puts up a camera and he's shooting himself being a hero in yeah. a bank robbery. Well, I'm the big guy that takes the money. And he knocks me down, jumps on my stomach, and jumps away. That's me. But I'm behind a mask again. There I have a, a, a bank robber mask on. <laughs> on that there. So yeah, I did the Spider-Mans. Iron Man 1 and 2? Iron Man 1 and 2, I worked behind the scenes. I've worked a lot behind the scenes doing yeah. uh, wire wire uh, specialty stuff. So we're doing wire stunts, wire rigging. And I've been fortunate doing that. Doing a lot of that from uh, Avatar. Did Avatar. In Avatar, I also did a lot of the body movements for the uh, amp suit, which is the large mechanical yeah. creature that these, not creature, but machine that these guys would sit in. So I did the movements for that. And uh, I did Christmas Carol, Mars Needs Moms, uh, Tintin. Tintin, Mars Needs Mars, Avatar, Christmas Carol, um, Real Steel. I do all the wire work behind the scenes. Okay. So if there's people flying, if there's any of that sort, I'm doing all that behind the scenes. A lot of people put a lot of trust into you to handle that. They, they have been, <laughs> yes. I mean, yes. I, I guess you could say it's fortunate, but it's a pretty stressful job. Yeah. Because <laughs> they do put a lot of trust in me. It's really cool to have so many big name movies that you've been able to work on over these years. It's yeah. fantastic. So if you look at what I did with Ninja Turtles, right? I was yeah. a suit character with a puppeteer. Now I'm a puppeteer. A wire puppeteer, so I puppeteer humans now. <laughs> so it's just kind of all evolved, but it's all within the same realm of you know what I've learned in the previous. That is really wow. Is there anything you'd like to say to the turtle fans watching this who really have looked forward and loving your character, and this is your first chance to say anything to them? You can't get far without Razor. <laughs>
That's it. <laughs> okay. Uh, we will catch you guys next time here on Cowabunga Corner. <laughs>